Amen. For those who have your hymnals, please let's go to hymn number 512. Very, very familiar passage. Now listen, I need your help today. And the reason why I need your help, I don't know what got on me, but I'm thankful for the Lord of getting it off of me. What little bit of a voice I have, we're going to give it all, okay? Amen. So y'all please sing with me. We do two verses because we want the speaker to have as much time as they can possibly have because of this lesson, it was taught last year, I learned something from this lesson which would have helped me last year. So it is a very, very important lesson and it's extremely good information. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> All right, let's get started. We are... Climbing in Jacob's ladder, we are climbing in Jacob's ladder, we are climbing in Jacob's ladder, soldiers of the Chapter 12, verse 18 through 29. Please say amen when you have it. Amen. Amen. God words reads as such. For ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched and that burns with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest. And the sound of the and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of word, which voice they had heard and treated that the word should not be spoken to them any more. For they could not endure that which was commanded, and if so much as a beast touched the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with the dark. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. But ye are come unto Mount Sion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, that is an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly in the church of firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirit of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speak better things that of Abel. See ye, refuse him, refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on the earth, much more shall not we escape. If we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, who voice then shook the earth, now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I spake not the earth only, but also heaven. And in this word ye once more signify the removal of those things that are shaken, as those things which are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore we receive a kingdom which cannot be removed, cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and God godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Amen. 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 I have just read you the book of Hebrews chapter 12, Amen. verses 18 through 19. May God continue to have a blessing for the hearing, but most of all for the doing of, our, of his word, for the good edification of our soul. At this time, we'll be led in prayer by the speaker of the hour, 
Deaconess Perry. Every Yes, Lord. All of sins become true of your glory. Yes. Look up today, dear Heavenly Father, as we study your so word yes. and feast on your work, dear Heavenly Father. Thank you for just meeting all of our needs and taking yes, care Lord. of us, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for all of those who are here. We pray for all of those who are on the way. Yes. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for you are truly worthy of all glory on this place. Yes, Lord. Be with us this day as we study your word. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dickens Perry. Good morning, everybody. The name of our lesson today is Obedience and Respect. We will find that in the book of Exodus, chapter 19, verse 16 through 25. I like the title, Obedience and Respect. Something that this generation here had a lot of because we know our parents didn't play with us. And they let you know they wasn't going to play with you. Amen. Things have changed. But this is an awesome lesson. The time was 1445 BC, which stands for before Christ. The place was Mount Sinai. The golden text was Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at either part of the mountain. Exodus 19, verse 17. Our related scripture reading, you will also find, and this will bless your soul, please look at Job chapter 40, verse 1 through 14. That's a very good one. Look at the book of Psalms, chapter 96, verse 1 through 13. We just read Hebrews chapter 12, verse 18 through 29. And then we have Revelation chapter 19, verse 4 through 10. As we customarily do, we break things down. Uh, first, we have the simile, which is you'll find in Exodus chapter 19, verses 16 through 19. Uh, Monstration, which is uh, Exodus chapter 19, verses 20 through 22. And accent, which you'll find in Exodus chapter 19, verses 23 through 25. And we want to talk about our aim today, which is to understand the events preceding the giving of the Ten Commandments. This lesson was before the Ten Commandments. So please keep that in mind as our very, very, very good teacher comes forth. The principle we want to sense the soundness and the fearfulness of God covenant with Israel, an application to have a proper sense of fear and respect in our relationship with the Lord. Uh, I'm going to get out the way here so our speaker will have plenty of time. But one thing I just want to leave with you, please remember, yes, we have uh, a relationship with Jesus Christ, but we also must remember that He is God. Amen. And a lot of times we do things as if God is doing us a favor. And that's not the correct way of doing it. Amen. We need to understand, he made us, we did not make him. And I'm going to say this, I'm going to get out of the way. I tell all five of my children, and I love them each, and I explain this to them. I love you, but understand this. I am the parent in this, and sometimes I'm going to say things that you don't like. But understand, I only do this out of love to keep you safe and from harm. Now, when they start looking at me as if I'm just a friend with no authority, then I fail. Amen? Mm -hmm. At this time, we would like to bring our very distinguished speaker. And for those of you online who've never heard her, you're in for a treat. Let's receive Deaconess Cynthia Perry with a hearty amen. 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 
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Amen. And greetings to each of you in your respective places. And to the St. Simon Baptist Church family, I say good morning. Good morning. I am indeed humbled and honored as I stand before you this morning by the aid of the Holy Spirit to present today's Sunday School lesson. And the lesson can be found in the Union Gospel Press 2022 Fall Quarter Edition. And this month we have began a new series of lessons titled Learning to Honor God. And the emphasis on each lesson has been on obedience and obeying God. Now this has been a special month here at St. Simon because the sisters have been teaching and they have each brought to the table something that we have been able to feast on from God's holy word that's found in the scriptures. Each lesson this quarter has come from the Old Testament book of Exodus with unit one being titled, The Beginning with Obedience. Sister Pamela Rembert taught lesson one from Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 12, on obedience and leadership. Sister Janetta Banks taught lesson 2 on Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 through 14, on the subject of obedient to remember. And Sister Tawana Billingsley taught lesson 3 on the topic, promise of obedience, from Exodus chapter 19, verses 1 through 6, and concluding with chapter 24, verses 3 through 8. And I might add that we enjoyed a full course meal, and we are still full indeed. Amen. Amen. Now this Sunday, we began in the second unit, which is unit 2. And the topic is obedience and worship. And Deacon King has already outlined our topic today, the subject being titled, Obedience and Respect. Um, it is coming from Exodus chapter 19, verses 16 through 25, and this is lesson four. He's given us our related scriptures as well as the time and the place. And our golden text, I'll just go ahead and read it once again. Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God, and they stood at the nether part of the mount. That's from Exodus chapter 19, verse 17. Just a little bit about our lesson background. Uh, once again, same as last week, we are in the book of Exodus. And just briefly, the book of Exodus is the second book of the Pentateuch. The word Exodus is derived from the Greek word which means departure. This is the second book of the Bible. It is one of the five Old Testament books of the law or the Torah written by Moses. And it details the history of the Israelites' departure from Egypt, and it continues the history of Israel from the point where the book of Genesis leaves off. Exodus recounts the Egyptian oppression of Job's ever-increasing descendants and their miraculous deliverance by God through Moses, who led them across the Red Sea to Mount Sinai, where they entered into a covenant with the Lord. We know that Moses was called by God to be the leader and mediator of the people of Israel, and he was a prophet and a lawgiver. Now last week's lesson included the verses 1 through 6 of Exodus chapter 19, and ironically, today's lesson, the printed portion, begins with verse 16. So before we proceed with today's verses, let's take a look at verses 7 through 15 of chapter 19 of Exodus. And Moses called the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee a thick cloud that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow. Let them wash their clothes. And be ready against the third day. For the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people unto Mount Sinai. And thou shalt set bounds upon the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves, that ye go not up unto the mount, 
or touch the border of it. Whoever touches the mount shall be surely put to death. There shall not be a hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through, whether it be beast or man, it shall not live. When the trumpet soundeth long, they shall come up to the mount. And Moses went down from the mount unto the people, and sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day. Come not at your wives. Now in this week's lesson, Moses gives God's instructions to the people. Prepare yourselves. Our introduction. After God spoke to Moses at Mount Sinai, Moses had made certain that the Israelites in Egypt knew that the Lord was the same God who had spoken to and worked in the lives of their ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. And Moses strived to free the Israelites from slavery that they experienced God's work in their personal history through miracles, plagues, and the defeat of Pharaoh's army. After Moses led them to the foot of Mount Sinai, they saw God manifest his presence with lightning, thunder, a loud trumpet blast, the thick cloud in the mountain, and God gave them abundant evidence that he was with them. The Lord had been with their ancestors, but he was with them more dramatic <coughs> excuse me, and in greater ways. He saved them from oppression and eventually led them to possess the land as he had promised their fathers. But it was not until Moses spoke to the Lord that these Israelites heard the voice of God when the Lord answered him. Now through Moses, God led the Israelites in ways radically different from what they had experienced as slaves. God spoke to Moses and gave them moral laws summed up in the Ten Commandments so they could learn how to govern themselves in obedience to God. Moreover, God's laws were for their benefit and best suited for their human nature as being created in the image of God. Anyone have a comment? Amen. Amen. All right, we'll go into our lesson. <laughs> We're going to go into our lesson outline. I'm going to ask for some volunteers. Um, as Deacon King stated, we have three um, topics here. Uh, this broken off into sections. The assembly, which covers Exodus chapter 19, verses 16 through 19. Admonition, Exodus chapter 19, that's verse 20 through 22. And ascent, Exodus chapter 19, verse 23 through 25. If I could have a volunteer to read assembly, Exodus 19, 16 through 19. Exodus 19, 16. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunder and lightning and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet exceedingly loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. And Moses brought forth the people out of out the camp to meet with God and they stood at the neither part of the mount. And Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire and the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace and the whole mount quaked greatly. Oh, 19, and sorry. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded loud and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake and God answered him by a voice. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> we're, all, we're looking here now at the assembly, which is titled Awesome Visitation. Now, what has happened here is that the Israelites, they have traveled three months from Egypt into the wilderness, where they camp at the foot of Mount Sinai. And that word, nether, it refers to the bottom of the lower part of the mountain. On the first day of the third month, after God freed his people from slavery in Egypt, Moses went up to Mount Sinai to fulfill the Lord's promise and prophecy to him. And God said, I will be with you. 
and this will be a sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. We find that in Exodus chapter 13, verse 12. That's a part of the lesson that Sister Rembrandt taught. After meeting with God, Moses went down to the mountain to prepare, to prepare the Israelites to meet the Lord so they could hear the Lord speak to Moses. And therefore, they would have no excuse not to trust, <clears throat> excuse me, honor or listen to Moses as the Lord's spokesman when God gave them the Ten Commandments and the covenant law through him. Now on the third day, God manifested his presence on the mountain using a combination of thunder, lightning, a loud blast, and a thick cloud. Now you know God is spirit, and the invisible God used these amazing wonders that terrified the people to make known his presence to them. He had done so already through the mighty miracles in Egypt, but this was a direct display of the Lord's almighty power for all the people to see and hear together at one time at Mount Sinai. Any comments or questions? <laughs> Amen. Now, we know from scripture that Sinai was the place where Moses had led his sheep. And Sinai was also the place where God had earlier called Moses to return to the land of his birth. The Israelites, they were the chosen people that the Lord had called his, chose, his treasured possession. And the people who were to be set apart in order that God would make into a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. And now they had prepared and cleaned themselves up so they could be consecrated to meet the Lord. The Lord had forbidden them to touch the mountain or face the penalty of death. And when Moses heard and saw the Lord's presence manifested in the mountain, he led the terrified people out to meet God. But they could not touch the mountain or they would surely die. Now in biblical history, this is one of the most magnificent things and sights that has ever taken place in the history of mankind. And just to think that God came down and showed himself and spoke with the people. And he just didn't do it in a little weak voice. Hey, y'all. <laughs> with thunder and lightning and furnace of fires and the earth quake violently. But this was God speaking audibly to the people. Any comments, anyone? Just, um, you know, there are events in our own lives that change you forever. You know, it's just that powerful. Mm -hmm. And to have an experience like this, to see a mountain shake, yeah. I would think that would change you forever. <laughs> Amen. You know, to have that kind of experience, but it didn't. Amen. You know, it was, no. it was just for a while. But you know, to me, yeah, I would have already been afraid even when we were going through the Red Sea. <laughs> but yeah. I, no bad, no, there's no, no machine, no nothing that could do what God did when he parted the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. That right there showed the power of God to the Israelites. So whatever Moses told them, they should have been up and ready to whatever he said without any question or anything because God had already showed his power when he brought them out of Egypt Amen. and through the Red Sea. Amen. And he had showed and performed those miracles yeah. through Moses. But this was actually a miracle that he was calling the people right. to, I understand that. to actually witness. Yeah. So yeah. this was very yeah. spectacular. Yeah, and, and my sister, this was the first time God ever spoke to the nation Amen. of Israel. Mm -hmm. yeah. And just like, you know, they got that old saying, first impression. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So God wanted to make sure that they knew yeah. exactly who they were, mm -hmm. who was doing the talking. Amen. <laughs> you know? Amen. Thank you. Anyone else? Amen. We'll continue on. In order for the people to enter into this covenant, they needed to be sanctified, set apart, and this would be accomplished by washing both their bodies and their clothing and refraining from certain activities and abstaining from fleshly desires. Moses had given them very strict orders. <coughs> Moses made sure that the people made the necessary preparations for their meeting with God. Now when the third day arrived, there were thunders and lightning and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud. They were not to touch or go beyond the boundaries. Our breaching these restrictions would result in instant death. 
Yes, God will do just what he says. And if he says it, he will do it. So we ought to do what he tells us to do. Amen. 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 He said it that so. Amen. God said it and that settled it. That's Mother Demon's song. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to take a look at authoritative voice. Um, Exodus chapter 19, verses 18 through 19. And Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke, because the Lord descended upon it in fire, and the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake, and God answered him by a voice. Now when Moses met the Lord for the first time, Moses heard the Lord speak from a burning bush, but the fire did not consume it. And the Lord's command, he took off his shoes because the Lord had told him he was standing on holy ground. When God gave the covenant of the law to the people through Moses, the Lord descended on the mountain in fire. The mountain shook more violently than a volcano erupting, but the people at the foot of the mountain, they were not harmed. Now this is a reminder to us that when the Lord gave the Holy Spirit to the followers at the day of Pentecost, he did this for the manifestation of fire and tongues of flame appeared above the head of each disciple. And likewise, it was done by God without burning them. Any questions, comments, anyone? Quick comment. Can you imagine, church, that God appears on a mountain in a fire and he's talking to you? That's got to be something in which we have a great deal of respect. We would all probably just fall to our knees and, you know, cover our heads and, yes, Lord, no, Lord, yes, Father because of the respect that we have for them. So it's, it's a lot here that the Israelites didn't do, but we have a chance to get it right. Amen. But then look at it from a standpoint too, you know, I'm not giving no excuse for the Israelites. Okay, they, they were there, Jacob took them in because of the famine and whatnot, and then they were, they were, they were being sanctioned by by the leader who is Jacob and he, he he made sure he referenced God in all that that was there and I know why they were in Goshen. But then after Jacob and then after Joseph died, you know, these people um, were so into the pagan gods with the from the from the uh, from the Egyptians that you know they just got so so involved. And we got people here that does the same thing. You know, we got people that don't go to church, that won't go to church, that don't believe, they won't, they won't consider it, and they just so stuck on their ways that they will not give God the respect whatsoever. And I, and I believe that that the same thing, the same approach happened to the uh, the Israelites or the Hebrews when they were in, in Egypt, and then now they're out, they see the miraculous things that God does for them, and they still got a hard heart themselves because they won't give in but it takes all this to get their attention but they still don't give in and they still don't don't uh, what is uh, commit to what God is telling them and he is still being the God the leader the only God and yet still they still do what they do but then they get fearful we got people do the same thing in our neighborhood they get fearful when things come up against them, and then all of a sudden, God comes alive to them. And then as soon as they get over it, they go right back to doing the same old thing that they were <laughs> yeah, doing all the time. Yeah. That's, that's, that's just like what you're saying. It's just like a child. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can threaten a child not to do so, and they might not do it for a little while, <laughs> but eventually, <laughs> they're going to go right back to that same thing. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Amen. Just like the Israelites were back then, we have the same things occurring even today. Amen. Amen. As the description of what occurred at Mount Sinai continues, we learn that the voice or the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder. Now just imagine, combined with the violent trembling of the mountain, 
The trumpet sound grew louder in a way that the sound could not be mistaken for thunder. The Lord's personal presence on the mountain was not just a thunderstorm with lightning, and it could not be mistaken for such. As the trumpet sound grew louder, Moses spoke first to the Lord, and the people heard the Lord answer Moses. And God gave the Israelites the opportunity to hear his voice speak real words in their language so they could understand the Lord in an audible voice. God knew the hearts of the people. They did not see God and were not permitted to see a form of the Lord with their eyes. If you see, they would later be given the Ten Commandments and be for, forbidden to, give any, to make any graven images of God. And if they had seen a form of the Lord, they would surely have carved graven images much sooner than they eventually did in disobedience to God. God manifests himself supremely through the words and through the people such as Moses, the prophets, the apostles, and the written scripture in the Old and the New Testament. And most assuredly and most supremely through the word made flesh that dwelt among us. Because in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and dwelt among us. And the Word became flesh, and made his dwelling among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Amen. No one has ever seen God but the one and only Son, who is himself God, and is the closest relationship with the Father, and has made him known. We found these scriptures in John 1 and 1, um, verse 14, verse 17 through 18. We know that God is holy, and we must honor and respect him. Amen. 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 Any Amen. comments, anyone? Questions? We'll now take a look at admonition, if I could have a volunteer to read. Verses 20 through 21. And the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mount, and the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mount, and Moses went up. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go down, charge people, lest they break through unto the Lord to gaze, and many of them perish. Is that it? And and let the priests also, which come near to the Lord, sanctify themselves, lest the Lord break forth upon them. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Now we see here that the description of the Lord's visitation to earth seems to indicate that he came only as far as the top of Mount Sinai. Moses therefore was called up to the top of the mount. And this time Moses immediately did what God commanded. Once on top of the mountain, Moses was obedient to God. Now Moses was 80 years old, Amen. and he had made numerous trips up and down the mountain. So we know that at, um, Moses was not like the average person who was up in age, but God was with Moses, and he used him in a mighty way, and he gave him strength to keep making those trips up and down the mountain. Now no matter how terrifying it was to the Israelites, and possibly to Moses to hear the Lord's command. Moses obeyed the voice of the Lord and proved himself an example for the people to follow when the Lord required a full-time commitment of consecration and obedience to him. The Lord graciously descended to the top of Mount Sinai and graciously spoke to the people directly and also through Moses. The people needed to see that Moses could safely go up and see the Lord and come down safely again so they would have no excuse for turning from Moses or the Lord. If Moses delayed coming down from the mount any time later, but we know what happened. Yeah. What really happened, we can take a look and see it recorded in Exodus chapter 32, verse 1 through 4. And the people, they gathered themselves together unto Aaron, and they demanded that he make them gods. Mm -hmm. Now this was in direct disobedience to God Almighty. We must reverence God when we obey His Word. 
obedience and respect go hand in hand. Amen. We are to glorify God and let our light shine for Jesus. Especially in the house of the Lord, we can't come in any kind of way. We must be respectful and we must respect God's house. Yes. Amen. One of the things that we can clearly see is in the presence of authority, we seem to act right. Amen. Whenever that authority is somewhat removed, we tend to go back to our base selves. Even with the presence of God being there, we notice that at the time of him, at the beginning when he said, don't cross this line and touch the bottom of this mountain, okay, they, they listened. But just as you made mention, as soon as Moses took his time, well, not take his time, but was delayed coming back down, our minds or their minds at that time started to what? Go astray. Mm -hmm. And then therefore our base nature, sinful nature, and all of these things start to take place. Mm -hmm. uh, like one of the uh, deacons over there said in reference to a family, we see that in the household. If the father or the mother decides to be, you know, a friendly person versus a person in authority, well, guess what the children start to do? They don't treat you as an authority figure. They treat you as someone that they can negotiate with, right? But we see in this situation, when the Lord is speaking and in his presence, just like in the Christian life, when we know the Lord is looking, right, we tend to act right. But when we think he is not looking, which we should always understand he always is, we tend to not act so right. And so the re obedience and respect it seemed to go hand in hand with authority, the presence of authority. And I think we should, uh, as a people, we should learn that and do better. Amen. 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 But to me, it's like the Israelites had short faith. And the reason why I say short faith is because Moses stayed up on Mount Sinai longer than what they expected. They decided to, uh, oh, let's build, us, let's build us a God. They just forgot all about what God had done for them. You know, and to me, I call that short faith. Amen. Yes, they have forgotten about the one true God. Yeah, they forgot about it. Amen. Now, once on the mountain, Moses was told to return and charge the people. The word charge also can be rendered warn or admonish. The warning in mind had to do with anyone going beyond the aforementioned boundaries that had been established in order to gaze upon the Lord, such actions would bring death. This may be hard to imagine because God is love. God does not desire that any should perish. This is in 2 Peter verse, um, chapter 3, verse 9. Therefore the Lord wanted Moses to be certain to warn the people a second time not to force their way up on the mountain to see the Lord. For if they did so, many of them would perish. The people needed to learn that Moses had not given them and was not going to give them any type of arbitrary man-made laws, but the very commands and laws of God. The Lord wanted the Israelites to trust his words and not to see him as an image or as a created image or to, he wanted the Israelites to trust his words and to make up in their minds that they were going to worship him. Jesus declared, God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. John 4 24. We must prepare ourselves, and we have to make sure that our relationship is right with the Lord, and don't get caught up in the things of this world. Amen. So we don't miss out on the blessings of God. Amen. 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 Um, I, I, I was I like this. I don't want to criticize, but a sin of uh, an illusion. But today, used in today, and what you were saying about uh, how how uh, God had uh, told Moses to put a barrier around the mountain, right, to keep anybody from coming up. And based on what we see in reality here in beginning of the year, how foolish people are who people lack, lack of days and lack concerning. Um, and if that, <coughs> what God did then, if he would, have, would do it now, people are more educated, 
a much more educated, um, more free, free going. You, I, I believe that regardless if they died or not, I believe people to challenge the mountain anyway. Because it's just how the spirit, the bad spirit of, of, of people nowadays, they just don't have any reference to God. They don't have no holiness in themselves. And they, if they did, they just selfish. And they just full of pride that they could care less about. But yet still all in all, um, I was just comparing what, what happened then to what how people react now because people have no self-respect for their own self. When people act today, they it's like I'm gonna use I'm gonna use coming to church. In the morning some people say, Well, you know, I guess I'm not going to church today. I just feel like I'm gonna just stay home. I'm 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 just I'm just tired. But if you think about what God has done for you and all the things that He brought you through, coming to church should be a main priority. Because if you think about everything that God has done, He woke you up this morning. Because there's somebody somewhere that didn't wake up. So God showed you that grace and able you to wake up to be able to come to church. And you should be excited to come to church and give God the honor and the glory and the praise that He truly deserves. And we Israelites, all the things that God has done for them, it's like what you've done for me lately. They all reverted back to the idol god when they had what's the name to make the the, 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 the statue. But the golden, calf. the golden calf, yeah. But in our day, it's what God do for us late now. If he do it now, then later on, oh I forgot, I ain't going to church today. We need to stop and give God the, uh, his honor and his glory each and every day. Amen. Yeah. One of the things I've realized on this journey, you, we have to take a look at ourselves a lot. Oh yeah. When we look in the mirror, we can't see Stanley Ricardo King. When I look in the mirror, I realize I'm a servant for the Lord. Mm -hmm. And there are things that physically I get tired and I might not want to do, but I have free will. Mm -hmm. And with free will, if I want to please the Father and say thank you for all that you've done for me and give you all that I have while I have time to do it, then I have to take that old sinful man and kill him. And a lot of times what we're seeing here with the Israelite, they let the sinful man out. They, they didn't look in the mirror and say, you know what, we serve a good God. He's brought us from a mighty long way, and we need to do what thus says the Lord. Their mindset was, eat, drink, and be merry. Hey, he'll forgive us, or maybe tomorrow we die. This shows you how more knowledgeable God is over everything, because he already knew. He saw us today. He knew what we were going to be like. Amen. If it was not for grace, and the Lord Jesus Christ to be the mediator that we are under today, it would be a whole lot less people in the world if they had to deal directly with God Himself. That's true. That's true. I just want to I, I, I want to say something because we um, we're in, in our association, and it, it is a shame. It is a shame that we go to the association. We it's just a handful of people. And the reverence of how, and I understand, now I do understand how some of the churches were so tight on the preciousness and the holiness of, of God and the order of the services and what, the, how, how they presented uh, their worship. And then, you know, as time goes by, you start seeing people falling off. And you see people falling off. And then all of a sudden now it's kind of like, it's kind of dusty like a dusty road and you might see a car ride down and, and there's a whole lot of dust but you don't see followers no more so with that being said the reverencing that God had was was teaching the Israelites uh, it, it the people have fell away just like our churches they have fell away because they don't want that precious control of God they just Leave it as it is, and they're like, like the deacon saying, you know, I have a choice, and I don't want to do it. But yet still, they're, they're calling on God for help. And then God blesses us 
well as we want it or not, they're just well as they're unjust. Mm -hmm. But it's sickening that we see, and I know, I, I might be preaching to the choir or saying something to the choir, but just thinking about the union, how it has fell off. When we first went years ago and we was in the union, there was 13 churches. Now it's only three. The churches just say, I'm, I had enough. I'm not going to go anymore. But because they don't go no more, if you look at it, if you really go to their, their church and see their church, they don't go. But if you look at the number and the membership of their church, they don't have. But when they were there, they had. Remember, a long time ago we used to go to the union, mother, you couldn't even get in the church. Couldn't even get in the church. Now, you go in there and you can hear, you can hear your heartbeat. Yeah. <laughs> Because there's nobody there but us, but the few. But I, but I'm, 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 I may have pulled off the lesson a little bit, but representing God is the whole focus of this, and Jesus Christ, because that's what it's all about. And if you don't have enough respect for the Lord God, as he was teaching the Israelites, then you don't have no respect for yourself, and you're not going to prosper the way he would have you to prosper. Amen. Amen. Thank you all Amen. for your answer. Yes, ma'am. Oh, thank you, Deacon Perry, for making this current as to what's going on with us today and in, in the fellowship today and in the body of Christ and looking at the Israelites and you look at us and you try to figure out how much difference are we now than they were then. They went to the mountain, they experienced God in this land today we're still dealing with one of the worst plagues that will go down in history as one of the worst plagues that we have experienced. We read in our word that God is a consuming fire. But we'll take cliches like, oh, well, God know we're not perfect. <laughs> God know we're going to slip. And we create wiggle room for ourselves. <laughs> you know? And we justify our bad behavior. Mm -hmm. Just like the Israelites did. Mm -hmm. How much more is it going to take for man to realize that God is God and He is a consumer father? Amen. 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 He is that God that loves us. And the same God that loves us chastises us. Amen. Mm -hmm. Every time we create a wiggle room for our family, we say, oh, well, God knew I wasn't perfect. Amen. Well, that don't change the word. Amen. That don't impress God. That's so true. You still better put the mask on. Yes, ma'am. You know, y'all, I'm going to quit. Yes, ma'am. That is a valid point. Thank but you that's just nice. current. That's what the comparison yeah. brought us to yeah. right now. Yeah. We got to go to a meeting today. At one time, the house was packed. Yes, ma'am. This will be my second time. Amen. Well, I hope it be at least as many was the last time we were there. <laughs> <laughs> I hope the attendance didn't fall off again. Yes, ma'am. But we got to make it current. We got to look at God. Yes, he's loved. He do all of these wonderful things, but he is a consuming fire. And if you can if you convince yourself that it's okay to not be perfect, mm -hmm. yeah. if you convince yourself it's okay that God knows I'm going to sleep. If you convince yourself it's okay, it don't change the fact that he still is a consuming fire. Amen. Mm -hmm. I just know that. Um, uh, at uh, Deacon Williams mentioned last week about how human nature just doesn't change. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as we bring things forward to the day, we do do the same thing. Sorry. If we get in trouble, mm -hmm. if, if there's a personal catastrophe, we run to the church and we make these commitments. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to do it again. You know, uh, I messed up and y'all going to see me here every Sunday and every mm -hmm. Wednesday night and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> that, that may last a month. <laughs> you know, and then we maybe. go back into maybe. maybe. And then we go back into our same ways. Mm -hmm. And we don't like rules. Mm -hmm. uh, Mother Give mentioned me about the mask. When they put out the mask mandate, oh my gosh. But we don't, we don't like rules. We won't obey the speed limit. <laughs> you know, you know, one red light to get to church. <laughs> one red light to get to church. <laughs> 
<laughs> Human nature just doesn't change. Yes, that's what I'm to make it the word tells us there is nothing new under the sun. Humanity <laughs> to vanities. Amen. We're going to move right along. Um, <laughs> sacred trust. This is Exodus chapter 19, verse 22. And let the priests also, which come near the Lord, sanctify themselves, lest the Lord break through forth upon them. Now the mention of the priests raises the questions of the identity of these individuals. Since the Aaronic priesthood had not yet officially been established, we cannot be certain who they were. One suggestion is they were the elders of Israel. And this is found in Exodus chapter 3, verse 18. The men who by virtue of their age and experience were the recognized leaders of the descendants of Jacob. Another possibility is that they were the young men of the children of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto the Lord. That's found in Exodus chapter 24, verse 5. Another suggestion is that the firstborn of Israel chapter 13, verse 2, who were spared during the final plague and functioned as the first priest. Another suggestion is that these priests may have been the elders that Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, encouraged Moses to appoint. And we see this in Exodus chapter 18, verse 19 through 27. The command indicates that no one, not even the priests, can presume that they can come into the presence of the Lord without consecrating themselves, which means setting themselves apart from sin for God's holy service. Perhaps these priests offered the sacrifices on the altar that were built prior to the construction of the tabernacle. Both people and priests had to be careful about keeping their distance from the holy mountain. We must indeed be serious about God's business. Amen. People in certain positions may think that the rules do not apply to them mm. or to others, but this is not true. No one is above God's law. Mm. The lesson gives a sad example of persons who have misused their positions for personal gains. Mm. Those in elevated or important positions may also must also be careful not to overstep their boundaries. Amen. 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 That's a true statement. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're now going to take a look at the ascent. Exodus chapter 18, verse is 23 through 25. May I get a volunteer, please? Amen. Verse 23 through 25. Uh, 23 says, And Moses said unto the Lord, The people cannot come up to the Mount Sinai, for thou chargest us, saying, Set bounds about the mount and sanctify it. And the Lord said unto him, Away, get thee down, and thou shalt come up. Thou and Aaron with thee, but let not the priest and the people break through to come up unto the unto the Lord, lest he break forth upon them. So Moses went down unto this people unto the people and spoke unto them. Amen. Now Moses had ascended Mount Sinai to be in the presence of God. Moses would have to make many trips to the mountain to receive divine instructions in response to the Lord's command in verses 21 and 22. Moses reminded the Lord that the people cannot come up to Mount Sinai. Now just think, as we all know, the natural curiosity of humans to see and do things that they have never seen or done. That's always with us. Now we see this happening time and time again. You say don't touch, no trespassing, but what happens? It's just a matter of time. Mm -hmm. People get so excited about things that are happening. Just a few to name example. Example, meeting a celebrity. They're gonna rush the stage. Um, people camp out all night just to be the first to be in line. So when the doors open, oh, yeah. Uh, when a major event or grand opening is taking place. Yes. Uh, they try to run backstage and get a backstage pass, and they go wandering around, even on the football fields and in the dugout, 
in places where they have no business. And sometimes this can actually lead to trouble. And these are just a few examples. And we should avoid being distracted and just focus on Jesus. Moses told the Lord that he had done what he had told him to do. Now in Moses' opinion, the people had been sufficiently warned not to come forward and touch the mountain. But the Lord knew his people better than Moses, and the Lord knew how quickly they would be prone to disobey. So the Lord ordered Moses to go down the mountain once again and warn them. Over time, Moses would surely learn more about the character of those whom he was chosen to lead. Now on his next trip up the mountain, Moses was told to bring Aaron, his brother, with him. Aaron had already been functioning as Moses' spokesman. We see this in Exodus chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. And he was about to become the nation's first high priest. As such, it was important for him to be in the presence of the Lord with Moses. Now we see that Aaron was invited to the mountain. However, this did not mean or imply that the others were to come as well. This was not a free-for-all. That is why Moses was told by God to warn the people, let not the priests and the people break through to come up to the Lord. Otherwise, God would be forced to break forth and destroy them. Now, God's law is always an expression of his love, and God gives his laws for the benefit of his people. The ceremonial laws God gave Moses pointed toward the coming of God's Son, Jesus the Messiah, and what he would do. God gave moral laws, the Ten Commandments, and all the people everywhere for the moral laws are designed according to our nature as created by God. To be a law was just not to take heed to advice or suggestion. There must be a penalty for disobeying. If the Israelite forced his or her way into the Lord's presence contrary to his command, the penalty would be death. The Lord and his law should be respected, and there would be consequences for disobeying the Lord. The Israelites needed to learn to obey God rather than use their newfound freedom for their own selfish purposes. They also needed to learn to respect Moses as their lawgiver and eventually trust Aaron as their high priest. Questions or comments, anyone? Amen. Amen. We see that we they were no longer slaves or under the Pharaoh or the slave masters, and they had to learn to govern themselves according to the laws that were given them by God. These God-given laws were suited for their physical, spiritual nature, and it was for their benefits. Comments, questions? Okay, we're wrapping up now. Mediator appointed. So Moses went down to the people and spake unto them. Chosen by God as Israel's intermediary, Moses delivered God's special message to the people. Later he interceded on their behalf, along with being their teacher and lawgiver. At this point in Israel's history, bringing God's laws, statutes, ordinances, and decrees was, made, was Moses' primary role. Once again, we learn that Moses did not argue with God, but obeyed God. Amen. Moses gave the Lord's law when he, Moses gave the Lord a reason why he thought he did not need to go and talk to the Israelites again. He had done what the Lord had told him to do earlier. God patiently restated his command to Moses without giving Moses any reasons why he wanted Moses to do what he commanded. And Moses obeyed the Lord. And this is what we must do. We must be obedient and respect the Lord. We know that God, for his good reasons, for all he tells us and what he does. And sometimes we discover God's good reasons from the subsequent biblical histories, even as Moses would soon learn more about the nature of those that he was leading as they wandered in the wilderness 40 years as punishment for their rebellion. Amen. We also learn from experience 
why we should not sin or live in disobedience to God. Amen. 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 Wrapping up here. <laughs> Food for thought. <laughs> we must endeavor to have a proper sense of fear and respect in our relationship with the Lord. We should honor, obey, and respect God, for God is holy. We must prepare every day to meet with the Lord. Most often, people are looking for him to come in the loudness like he did in today's lesson in Exodus chapter 19. But he may come in the quietness. Look at what it says in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 11 through 12. And this is when he's speaking with Elijah, the angel is. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. Amen. Now our reflections. What does it mean to have a fear of God? For the unbeliever, the fear of God is the fear of judgment, of God's eternal death, which is eternal separation from God. And we see this in Luke chapter 12, verse 5, and in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 31. But for the believer, the fear of God is something much different. The believer's fear is reverence of God. Hebrews 12, 28 through 29 is a good description of this. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. This reverence and awe is exactly what the fear of God means for Christians. This is a motivating factor for us to surrender to the creator of the universe. Amen. And in conclusion, there is a blessing in obedience to God. God's laws are designed for our protection. God's manifestation at Mount Sinai not only portrays his holiness, power, and purity, but also the separation that he demands between himself and sin. Amen. The combination of washing their clothes, keeping their distance from Sinai, and witnessing the storm must have left a great impression on the Israelites' sinfulness and God's great holiness. Not only did the Israelites tremble with fear, but Moses also admitted his own fear in Hebrews 20, Hebrews 12, verse 21, and Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 19. And rightfully so, for the fear of God is the beginning of knowledge. Proverbs 1 and 7. Only as people revered God and obeyed could they truly be God's holy nation and enjoy the privileges of being a kingdom of priests. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 Amen.